The most important feature of juniper bonsai is the uh, deadwood, the shari, the uh, white section. Every species has its own characteristic or its own important feature which needs to be brought out. You would never make one kind of tree look like another. You would never make a uh, birch cascade, it would, it would be wrong. But juniper have uh, no real shape of their own. When in nature they are a, a shrub. Certainly in the West they tend to be shrub-like. Uh, so often you would make them look a little bit like pine. The tree has been cared for for a long time, and this is shown by the live veins. The trunk, which was originally cylindrical, circular, is now, if you feel it, is now uh, unusual shape. Okay, so with juniper bonsai, the trunk, if you cut it in two, it starts like a cylinder, like a tube. Uh, and then, over time, it becomes irregular, with live sections, okay, and also dead areas, like here, okay? And that's, this is the nature of the tree. This is why you end up with with uh, the shari, the uh, deadwood. This is why this happens. And it happens because when you have a tree, a juniper bonsai, okay, and you cut a branch, also that part of the trunk to that root also dies. Okay, so this is why juniper bonsai look the way they do. For new people to bonsai, often deadwood is unattractive. They don't like it. Uh, it, is, well, it, it is death. Uh, but the tree is still very much alive. Okay, you see here on the front you've got a large section of dead root here. Also coming up the trunk here is a live vein, or was alive. It is no longer now alive. This section here you can feel is now dead, or very much close to death. Okay, so in time this will also go and become white, and uh, become like the rest of the uh, shari. And this is because this root here has been cut, okay? And nothing is feeding it. There's nothing here to feed this live section of the bark here, so it has died. Um, this is very, very flat when you compare to here, which is very, very, like a muscle, like very, very strong, because it's this big root here, which is feeding that, and feeding this branch, and feeding this branch, and feeding this branch. So in time, that will also go. <coughs> The shari is now looking quite nice and old and weathered. Lime sulphur, the white that you see uh, on the juniper bonsai, the uh, orange liquid which you paint and smells very bad, is a uh, pesticide. It's to kill fungi. It's to kill. Uh, it's a, a winter spray to prevent pests and diseases. The white, the fact that it turns shari white, is a bit of a byproduct. It, it, that's not its main purpose. So, having it too white is not so nice. It will look artificial. So, in time, we want this to go sort of silvery grey, natural, and the natural cracks of the, uh, vein, uh, the grain of the wood start showing up. So, when you carve a juniper bonsai, always stay in line with the natural movement of the trunk. Don't try to carve and go in funny directions because it will look artificial. The white lime sulphur that you paint on shari is a pesticide, as I said. It doesn't stop the dead wood from rotting, from decomposing. So every year you have to check that this wood is very, very hard. It will rot because it is in contact with the soil. If it begins to rot, then you have to preserve it. And one of the best preservatives to do this with is super glue. Uh, lime sulphur won't stop it from rotting. So you have to impregnate it, you have to soak it with something that will make it almost like plastic uh, and that will stop the wet getting in. So if you feel this is getting soft, then you have to treat it. You have to keep this area also clear of moss, weeds, algae, because that will also rot it. The shari of the bonsai, the dead wood, is not long lived. With a tree like this, which has been grown in a garden centre, uh, a nursery, for many years, it's been growing quickly, and therefore the annual rings are very, very far apart. 
and the wood is very soft, a little bit like pine or spruce. The, uh, va the grain is spread out because the tree has grown quickly. And if it's grown quickly, it will also rot very, very quickly. So we have to be careful. A, a Yamagori juniper, a juniper that's been collected from the mountains, for instance, which has grown slower, will take a lot, lot longer to rot. So we have to be very, very careful with this. We have to take special care of the wood because it is the main feature of the tree. If this rots and disintegrates and falls apart, then the tree will be ruined as a bonsai. This is the most important part. More important than the branches. We can make a juniper bonsai from just one branch. Uh, the most important feature is this dead wood. Okay, so as I said, this section here on close inspection is actually dead. This live part that runs down here. And the uh, live veins run up either side. So this can be cleaned off. The reason this has died is because if this is the trunk, okay, and the roots and roots and roots, the tree always takes the shortest distance between the points. So this root here will feed this branch here, okay, like that. And as I say, if we cut that branch, that root will die. But what we've got with this tree, we have these feeding these, and then the, on the front of the tree, the bark goes across like that, okay? And the tree won't that redirect. Juniper's a very, very, very lazy tree. They will not redirect sap from here to here. Okay, it will just go the shortest distance and it has killed that one. Taxus on the other hand, oh, Taxus on the other hand, yew tree, uh, will do this. We'll, we'll make a new path very easily without any problem. So this is why the front section is down. There's no real uh, point keeping this with bark on. It will drop off in time anyway. An important feature of deadwood bonsai is we always need to be able to see a live vein from the front, that is, this live section. If you look at the front of the tree, we must always see the brown bit, the live bit. If we cannot, and it's only uh, deadwood at the front, it looks like we've screwed a tree to the back of a piece of deadwood and isn't, isn't very attractive. Okay, so this is good. So that can be cleaned off at any point. There's also other areas, like on the back of the tree. The tree is getting nicely old now and is also shedding other parts of the tree. Because this shabby was made here, below it is also started to die and recede. Okay? So that can also come away. The same in the top of the tree here, where this uh, tangin, this uh, top gin, has been made. Also below it is also dead. So this tree has a lot more dead wood hidden about it than we can see now. And that would be the, uh, the step of the future, is to develop that a little bit more. The pads are a little bit pom-pom-like. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten branches maybe. A tree which we're trying to look like it was um, you know, 50 meters tall would have thousands of branches. So we need to make one path look like many, many different paths. Okay? So we need to divide them a little bit. Okay? And open them out. So rather than a branch which looks like this, the branch needs to be more like that. Okay? So much more interest, much more detail. The small little details, the small pads will make the tree seem even bigger. Okay? If you imagine a tree that only looks like this, it, it is a, uh, you know, we don't know how big it is. We need a tree which looks, you know, more like that. And we, we end up with a much greater sense of scale because, because we've put more detail into it. What is also important with juniper bonsai 
is it the, or with all bonsai, is that the design and shape of the tree must be sustainable. In other words, this tree looks great now, but in 10 years' time, we want the tree to look even better. We don't want to, today to be the best this tree ever looked. Every year, you want your trees to improve in value, in uh, visual sort of value, uh, and maybe in financial value as well. So to do that, the shape must be sustainable. Without correct pruning, the tree will get bigger, 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 and no longer be a bonsai. So pruning is the most important uh, technique with all bonsai, is to create back buds. Back to the branch here. Okay. What will happen is, over time, this branch will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And at some point, it's going to become too large for the tree. What we need to develop is branches behind these pads. So, in time, we can cut the branch away and still have another pad here, which will get bigger, bigger, and bigger. And we develop something behind that. So we can, as one branch extends and gets too long, we can take it away and there's another branch coming out to fill that space. So the design becomes sustainable for a long, long period of time, not just a bonsai for five years, uh, and then you sell it. You, you, know, you, you need to look long, long, you know, much further down the line. So when you style a tree for the first time, the basic structure is the most important thing to establish, and that will be the bare bones on which you develop all the foliage paths. So you're not making a bonsai for today. So, this tree is a very large juniper, as you can see. It is very, very uh, labour intensive. There's lots of work to do on this all the time. Lots of dead needles to pull out, to keep clean, to keep untangled, to keep healthy. Maybe uh, you'll get disease if the uh, needles are untidy, if there's many, many dead needles here. It's very, very sharp. It's not, <laughs> not pleasant to uh, work on too much. So uh, it's a labour of love, but can be made to look Gorgeous. Needle juniper, uh, needle, uh, junipers rigida, tosho, uh, are very, very difficult to look after in the western climate. This species is a great alternative. It's much, much easier to look after. And it back buds very, very easily. So, to get back budding, we need to allow the tree to grow strongly and feed lots. We don't tend to feed enough in the west. So, in summer, this pot should be covered in feed. Okay, lots, maybe, you know, you know very expensive tree. <laughs> you, you know, spend a lot on feed, but it needs heaven feeding. And then we allow the tree to grow and then prune back. But you can see that there are, if you have a close look to this tree, thousands of little buds, all waiting just for a little bit of light and a little bit of care to start growing. So the ends are getting quite uh, big. The ends at the moment are looking... The foliage pad is like this, okay? And what we want is the opposite. Okay, so if this area here, which needs pruning, and this area here, which needs encouraging. This is where all the little buds are, all the little buds are growing, and we need them to build here. And then we create a triangular foliage pad. Because it's a shrub, because it's a, a, a garden plant, it uh, has no shape. These are all wanting to grow towards the light. It doesn't care about the buds here, it will shed them. It's just trying to grow bigger in the tree, and we need to make sure that it creates, keeps these interior buds. And that's going to be the same for many of the trees here. So, this foliage pad, on the other hand, although it's big, is a much better shape, it is very well made. Um, it's a very, very strong species, as I say. You can go be quite heavy with uh, scissors on this tree and you can finger pinch as well. We talk about, we'll talk about finger pinching when it comes to the other Chinese junipers, the uh, softer, cord-like ones. But finger pinching all over this tree will be absolutely fine to do. Some adjustments in the branches. As they've got older, they've started to raise a little bit, so yeah. down, down. And the top needs, again, it's flat on top, needs doming a little like that. And also, when you exhibit it next time, you know, the bark will come up a beautiful red colour, which will contrast beautifully with the white deadwood. 
So that can be also uh, looked at. Funnily enough, one of the people which really put this species on the map was Dan Barton. Uh, he had many of these species. It's very, very readily available in garden centres. It's uh, one of the best species of juniper possible for bonsai in a western climate. It's so reliable. It, down point are, it's very uncomfortable to work on. Some people are allergic to junipers and will come out in a rash, but you know, it's one of the best species of juniper, but it, work, it develops so quickly that it needs an awful lot of time and care to keep it looking good. Also here at the front of the tree, like I say, the shari can come down a little bit further, possibly maybe even to link up with this one here. The way to grow juniper, certainly from cuttings, which is the way that the uh, sort of Japanese junipers are created. Let me explain. Um, certainly in Japan you cannot dig up yamadori, uh, collected trees anymore. It's illegal. So many junipers that you see today are being grown by the Japanese to create a a, a, a stopgap, a fill-in for those collected trees that are no longer available. What do you need to, all you need to do to start maybe making juniper bonsai? For those that don't know, I uh, grow shohin size bonsai, which is usually about so big. You maybe start with a cutting of a juniper, and then you wire it and make it as twisty as you possibly can. Okay? Twisting the grain of the wood, so where the grain was going in one direction before, like with this tree, which is almost straight, the grain now goes round and round and round and round. And then we create a much more natural, more like a uh, mountain tree, because we can make the dead wood, you know, much more twisty and much more random, much more like a a tree that's been collected from nature and not one that's been cultivated. This is the major drawback with garden centre plants is generally they're straight and you want to make as gnarly, as contorted, as interesting tree as possible. This is something that applies to junipers. So you can start maybe from a cutting and make a show him juniper uh, from nothing and maybe three or four years only doing it this way. Because what will happen from the trunk being cylindrical, like we have here, if you cut and leave only two sections of live bark, it will thicken quicker, because it's only got two directions to grow in. So you'll end up with a very thick, or very wide, flat trunk very, very quickly. Okay? And this is just a very common technique to uh, grow uh, the showing sized junipers. Okay? So you only leave two ribbons of bark, but they were keeping the green parts alive and also thickening the trunk very, very quickly. So from the side, the trunk may only look so thick, but from the side, it'll be, or from the front, it'll be like that. Okay? Only, only twisted. Would you do that when it's a young tree? Or yes. Or would you just wait until it's mature? I'm going to start with very young, maybe pencil, pencil thickness. Okay. So make it very, very twisty, yeah. take a ribbon of bark off the front and back and plant it in the garden and it will thicken and then every year make the dead wood wider and make the tree grow out on a long way and thicken quickly. So with this juniper, as I said, there's nothing really this tree needs. Maybe a day spent just improving a few little areas, like this section here, like the position of some of the branches, and like the form of some of the branches. A day. That's a day of good work, you know, before and after pictures will be brilliant. Pot-wise, the pot is absolutely uh, fine for the tree. The nabari, the base of the tree, isn't bad at all. The nabari, the start of the tree, is less important with junipers than with most species. Because part of the trunk is dead, it is never going to have this amazing root spread because it's impossible. We don't have a root here, but that's not as important as the dead wood, which is the most important feature. The nabari is more important on other species of tree, not juniper. The dead wood is the most important feature. Um, just time and age. I wouldn't recommend using power tools on it. I wouldn't recommend uh, blow torches or anything like that. Time is the best tool 
just to weather, age, crack, split, and be totally natural. The last thing you want is, you know, an artificially carved juniper. You can tell, you tell when it's uh, been made artificially. So let it just weather naturally. Maybe just wire brush just to open the grain up a little bit and make it look a little bit more weathered and also darken this a little bit. Let it go silver grey. Uh, not, too, not too white. But as I say, this section here can, can go. Does anybody have any more qu any questions generally on junipers? Yeah. about the red bark, yes. uh, would you use a metal brush just to make it more reddish? Yes, you could, when you're using a brush you need all manner of kinds of brushes. You, know, you, know, you can use sandpaper, you can use a steel or a brass brush, uh, and then work down to using toothbrushes. So start by pulling the very thick, it's like almost cinnamon, uh, bark away. Then start with a wire brush, then finish with sandpaper. Okay. Does it matter what time of the year you do that? No, no, not at all. We're making the sherry though on June because that does have a, a, the time of year is important. If you make it in winter, it's harder to do because there's not as much sap moving in the tree and the bark is much more stuck to the wood, but it will last longer. And this is very important. The sherry is there for 20, 30, 40, 100 years, not just here, last for five years. So we need to take care of it. This is why I don't advocate using a blowtorch on a dead wood. It will give you a very instant image and will be great for demonstration and you can stand on the stage and show people how much you've done in two hours. But it's not good for the tree. The tree will burn very easily and also, you know, it will cook uh, without you realising. And also the dead wood will deteriorate. The burning of it will look nice but it will actually crack and soften the wood and it's not going to last forever. And with it being the main feature of the juniper bonsai, we need to take the most care of the dead wood. So, yes, just a, a day spent, a good fun day just spent, fine wiring, uh, cleaning up tweezers, you know, this is when to get sort of grandchildren involved and things like that to pull off dead needles and things like that. And start employing family members to do it. Funnily enough, I get my, my, my mum used to help me a lot, so my parents are uh, a godsend when it comes to looking after my bonsai when I'm uh, travelling. So, yeah, I usually pay my parents to needle pull and things like that. This is why I grow small bonsai only now, because this will take, this will take a day to do. If this was a showroom bonsai, it would take 20 minutes. With the surface, when you come to exhibit a bonsai, the surface of the soil is very important. It's different from tree to tree. An evergreen tree, a shohaku bonsai, is always going to be older. It's going to live for three, four hundred years old. Uh, unlike a deciduous tree, a leaf tree, uh, Zoki bonsai, which will only live in its natural life for maybe 100, 120 years. And the surface of the soil should be to represent that. We have an old tree here, and we have a nice looking old pot. And we need the surface soil to look equally as old. It would be wrong to have new soil, because you've got old, old, and then it would look new, which would look uh, incongruous, it wouldn't work. So the surface soil also needs to look old, so lichens, unusual mosses, all things like that to make it look as natural and as old as possible. Whereas with a deciduous tree, the soil would look newer. It would just be maybe plain moss, not dead, you know, plain green healthy moss. No dead moss, no lichens, no, um, you know, not as ancient looking. 